Hi, hey, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now today's video is all about one book and one book only. And it's because I read it and it made me want to ask the question, why, why are people not shouting from the rooftops about this book? Why? Why, why? Why? All the whys. All the whys. So here's the thing. I do occasionally see a post on Instagram about the book or the series, mostly about the one book, the first book, which I'm going to tell you about in a minute. So but mind it. Stay. Wait, wait, wait. Hold your horses. <laughs> so I do see a post about it every now and again but it's it's just it's usually not so much about the book or the series or the author or anything like that it's just um, aesthetic purposes really um because what else is bookstagram but aesthetic pictures and reels i don't know mostly it's that i think uh mostly it's that but i can't really remember a time, a video, a person, a whatever, who's mentioned this book or series, <laughs> like a lot. Maybe the occasional mini mention, I read said book, blah, 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 blah. But not, but, but not more than that. Not more than that. So what am I talking about? What book am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about the bone season. <laughs> um, so I do have two different sorts of copies uh, of the bone season. This is a paperback with, I want to say, the original text. And this hardback here with new covers and all uh, is a revised, a author's note. Now, exactly what that means, I'm not too sure. I did read this version and I will read this version uh, soon, but not right the second so maybe i will figure it out but most likely i will just read the same book again uh not really noticing many difference but we'll see we'll see i'll i'll keep you updated if you want to hear about it first off what is this book about it's it's set in the future it's 2050 something 2060 uh so it's it's not present day time <laughs> it's a it's a different kind of world it's an old world but a different kind of world so like 200 years ago from 2050 so in 1858 i don't know um these I want to call them creatures because I can't really say the word. Um, I, d I don't know how to pronounce it, the word that they are really are something. Anyway, they came. Now, I want to call them like creatures from hell, basically, because that's the impression I'm getting. That's the like first impression I got was that they basically came from hell to... I don't know really what, but they say they came because these other creatures from where they're from um, invaded Earth, as it were. <laughs> this sounds like an alien story. It's, it's not really, but uh, let me get to it. There, there's these creatures, things are something, um, and they've sort of integrated into society, into the government system and all that. So we have them as that but we don't really find out about them just yet so when we start the book we started in london so we meet paige i presume that paige is the main character throughout but she is the main in this one so we're just gonna go with that so we meet paige paige is clairvoyant she's one of those people so in this society where page lives um basically you have the normal people which they're called something i forgot and we have different kinds of clairvoyancy is that the word anyway page is one of these people so she has a sort of ability as it were and she 
<laughs> I suppose you can sort of call it a crime syndicate thing. Um, so she's part of this group that just happens to like re have their headquarters in Seven Dials. So a lot of the pictures we see on bookstagram and stuff are like this book out in Seven Dials. And it makes a lot of more sense when you know that's where the base is. We don't really find out all that much about what it is they actually do, except, you know, try to stay away from the law or I, Scion? I want to say it's pronounced Scion. The Scion government is basically, it's these creatures I mentioned and, you know, the normal people um, who are afraid of the clairvoyant people. There's really not any good reason for, you know, the normal people to be afraid of the clairvoyant people, but, you know, everybody wants to live their life, but there's always going to be someone in any type of society, there's always going to be someone who's like, well, I'm the best person ever, the best human being, whatever. Yeah, no. So, anyway, Paige, she's not a Londoner from start. She's Irish and her father um, works in the government. So, he, a bunch of stuff happened where they, they're from and they have left a long time ago and she's basically grown up in London. Her father does not know about Paige Clairvoyancy. Is that the word? Is that even a word? Anyway, um, so she's, you know, hiding that from him as well. But after finding this group of people in London that she belongs to, she, she finally feels her, like herself. But then, one day, <laughs> She's on her way to her dad's, on the train, which is apparently very dangerous. And, well, she's sort of discovered, I guess, is a way to say it. And eventually this, I want to call them like the police, because that's kind of what they do, but they're not really that if that makes any sense. Anyway, they catch her and she is thrown into the tower temporarily. So the thing is, uh, the clairvoyant people, they are always like on the lookout to not get thrown in the tower because that's apparently where they get thrown in nowadays, then a days, in the future, in this society. Weird. As it turns out, every 10 years, <laughs> there's this thing called the bone season yeah so basically these widow creatures um they have their little thoughts where they basically collect clairvoyant people uh and some non-clairvoyant people just normal people um who basically become their slaves and then they are supposedly trained to fight off these Eminem, Eminems, <laughs> that's not the word, these, the bad dudes, because, you know, the weirdo creatures that kidnaps people are not the bad dudes. Like, what? Of course they are. Uh, but, yeah, there's these bad, bad creatures. Such a bad explanation. Such a bad explanation. <laughs> anyway, the, the way the book goes, so... First off, um, I was a bit hesitant to picking up the book in the first place because I did start The Priory of the Orange Tree by the same author and I did that after hearing about how The Priory was like this greatest book ever written and I could not get into it. I could not get into it. It was like too many things at the same time and it was... Uh, probably not the right time for me to read that book but there we go I will try to do that in the future again but that's beside the point this is not about the priory this video is not about the priory this is about the born season okay okay let's continue on then shall we anyway so I was a bit hesitant to pick it up but then weirdly 
I don't know why. I just, one night I just picked it up and I was like, oh, well, <laughs> I was hooked. I was hooked. Yes, I was hooked. I got into this book not expecting anything, but then I was sucked in. I was sucked in and I just wanted more and then I finished the book and I'm like, what do I do with myself now? What do I do? I do this video. That's what I do. <laughs> so the way it's written, it's so, it's complex. The world is complex. There's a lot of things happening and you need to keep track of, but not, not in a bad way. It's very easily written. You just, well, if, you, if you're me in this case, you just get sucked in. And then it makes me question, why are people not shouting about this book? Because what? It was so good. It was so good. So what I love about it, except for, you know, the theme and, you know, what's happening and the plot and stuff. It's, it's, an, it's an intriguing plot, but it's the way that these places in London specifically are mentioned and I just feel like I'm there. I feel like I'm there in that moment when we just pass through whatever we pass through. We pass through city parts. The fact that like London is so far in life, my favourite place to be in the world. I have not been to very many places so I can't say, I mean it's it, it, it's uncontended so far. It's my favourite city. It's my favourite place to be. It's where I feel the most home. So <laughs> when I find a book that draws me in and makes me feel like I am there in this way, and this this happened as well with Ben, ben Aronovich's Rivers of London series. I've only read the first three books in that series, but it's the same kind of deal. You get sucked in and you're like, I know that place. I know exactly where that is. I, I've i walked those streets. I am walking them now. Not literally, but it feels like you are when you're reading the book. Um, that that makes the thing. That it's, it's just something that just makes it for me. Yeah. Also, um, a lot of the book takes part in Oxford. I've only been to Oxford once in my life and so I, it's not as familiar as London is to me but it made me want to go back. <laughs> it made me want to go back and like explore these parts. I, I'm, I'm, I'm baffled. Why are people not shouting about this book? We need to talk about these books more. More. Tell me more. I want more. So yeah. <laughs> This is just the first book and I'm, I, yes, <laughs> um, I mean the, the other books may bring it down, what do I know? I did also read um, Pale the Dreamer, the, the Pale Dreamer, uh, which is the prequel novella to The Bone Season. It's in this book, it's why I read it, um, so <laughs> I thought I might as well. I liked it. I'm not sure I needed it, but that's the case with like most prequels and stuff, but it was very well written for a prequel that, well, we are supposed to, when we read a prequel, we are supposed to know the characters and such before we read that. It's kind of assumed that we do, um, but I feel like I could have understood most of what happened in that prequel without having read the first book as it were. So, you know, chef's kiss, chef's kiss. <sighs> anyway, I will eventually uh, read this version and see. Um, I am excited to see. Does it have the same like, <gasps> no, it has different headings. Ooh. So, um, in this book, the chapter, um, what's it called? The first page of the chapter. Um, it has these little flowers. Interesting. But in this one, we have, like, the little sun. Well, I guess it could be the inside of a flower as well. Anyway, um, it's probably this flower, come to think of it. Yeah. 
uh, night. Yeah, but uh, I will read this eventually and see what I think. Um, I just want to, you know, digest this one a bit and then I want to go into this. I'm going to do the same for uh, book two to four. Um, so I have this one, these ones already in book two to four and book two to four in this version. <laughs> This is so weird. Um, are coming out on May 9th, I believe. Uh, so I will I, I will I will I will do a thingy with all of them. Um but yeah, I just wanted to shout about the bone season. I needed to, okay? I needed to. And now I'm gonna leave you um and hope I honestly don't know what I'm hoping right now, but yeah. Um yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you all next time. Until then, take care. Oh, bye-bye.